Hey guys, Alex with Rapid Fire Rundown. Today, we're going to be discussing what I carry in a day, as well as going over a lot of EDC basics. Um, as you may be aware, um, first of all, my channel hasn't had a video in a little bit. I'm currently waiting on a Staccato P Heritage to come in that I want to get a nice expanded review on for you guys. But, um, as many of us are probably aware, um, there was a shooter incident recently up in Maine. Um, this hits particularly close to home, as you may know already, uh, that is actually where I'm located. So, that did prompt a video on EDC gear, what I recommend you carry, specifically talking about firearms, medical, knives, etc., um, because I want you guys to be prepared for situations like this. There are many people out there that want to get into guns, and uh, they just don't know where to start, right? And looking at my channel, they can see a review of a 43X and a 43 and a 1911, but that may not be the most useful. They need to know where the jumping off point is, okay? Like a, how to get into holsters, how to get into belts. So I want to make that in one concise video that you can watch and have a good understanding or a baseline intelligence of what you want to procure for situations like this. Um, what happened recently was a tragedy and was awful, and we need to be responsible to stop these from happening. And that's all I'm going to comment on. Okay, so we're going to be going from order of importance to order well, I guess to the least important things that you can carry if you have the, the use case for it. So starting off in the middle, we actually have firearms. Now, this is purely depending on, on your viewpoint of firearms. I'm in the camp of, yeah, you should definitely carry a firearm, especially considering the, the circumstances that are currently happening. Um, but once again, make up your own mind. Um, if you're watching this video, you've likely decided that a firearm is incredibly important to carry, right? So let's not get political here. Just understand that watch this video if you're interested in, in the topic at hand. Okay, so right here we have a Glock 43X. Once again, we're gonna be speaking to people that are very new, Glock. Glock is a incredibly reliable system. It is also incredibly easy to use. Glock is a striker fired design, which means the only thing you have to do, and this is of course rendered clear, the only thing you have to do is reciprocate the slide and pull the trigger. Okay. The 43X is an excellent platform. This right here is basically a 19, but it's dissected, obviously. If the 43X, which is a single stack lock, is too big for you, we have the 43. The 43 is an even smaller design with limited capacity. We're talking six to seven rounds, depending on the mag. Okay. Um, for many people, like myself, I'm able to conceal carry whatever the hell I want. That's why I'm buying a Staccato P, right? Just like this full-size 1911. I can conceal carry this all day. But there are many smaller framed females, or even just smaller framed males, right? 130, 150, 170 pounds. Five foot five, like, you guys can't carry as much as, as a big dude like me. 250 pounds, six foot one. I, you may not be able to carry those guns. So stepping down to a... a gun like this may make sense for you. It's a really good quote I want us to remember for the rest of the video, and that is, the gun you have on you is better than the gun you have at home. What does that mean? That means that this LCP is just worse than my Roland Special Build or my 43X. But if you're the kind of person that won't carry a 40, you buy a 43X and you won't carry it because it's too big, this LCP that you have on you is more is better than not having a gun at all, okay? So buy a firearm that makes sense for you. Now, um, people complain about their ability to carry and, and, and comfort. Remember, guns are comforting, not comfortable. Um, you can, even the smallest women could probably conceal carry this gun pretty easily, pretty, w w without any issues. But, once again, if, if you get a gun, or if you're looking at guns and you think this is too big, or this is too big, or this is too big, take a step down. Go down to a smaller gun. Because this 380 ACP held 22 LR, which I wouldn't recommend, but even 22 LR will will be better than, than fists, okay? 
All right, so enough with the 43X, just briefly looking at the other guns. Over here, we have a 1911. I'm specifically giving you guys a wide range of guns, and I'm going to be showing holsters just to hammer home the point that with today's climate and, you know, of course what happened recently, if you have a gun, even if you don't think it's the most tactical, like the, the apex of, of our guns, um, it, it, it could be worth carrying. If you have an old 1911, this is better than nothing. If you have a Glock with a comp, light, RMR, everything, this is better than nothing. Uh, if you have a Staccato P, or if you have a uh, HK-45, whatever gun, um, it's better than nothing. It's better than just using your fists, it's better than using palm. Um, it's just important that you carry a firearm. So, uh, if you need recommendations on firearms, I recommend you go to sites like Reddit or any other pistol forums. Um, generally speaking, if you're buying a modern firearm like a Glock, like an FN, like an M&P, like really anything, it's going to serve you well. Okay? Now, I'm going to go on another brief tangent here, and that is that are the accessories I have on this Glock. Compensator. Compensator reduces recoil. I wouldn't recommend you put compensators on your guns unless you are a professional, in air quotes. I'm not a professional, but I know what I'm doing. So I'm able to properly utilize a compensator. A light. I recommend you put a light on any firearm you have. That is because you can't shoot something you really you can't properly identify, right? Um, people will argue that point that you shouldn't be pointing your guns at things that you haven't properly identified beforehand and I understand that point but it's my personal philosophy that you put a light on your gun and I recommend it a red dot for a novice shooter red dots require a lot of training to get behind to get proficient with red dots are better than iron sights I don't think anyone will argue that point a red dots require a little bit of training okay so understand that if you just have this type setup right here which is just irons and a light um, this will serve you perfectly well. Irons, or I guess these are plastic sites, but irons are still a very effective tool. If you have the capability, moving to a red dot could be in your, your best interest. Now, I want to talk about holster setups, because like I mentioned, this is for people that don't understand the, the, the fundamentals of carrying a firearm. They want to know where to go. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple recommendations, and I have further reviews in my channel. The first one is Tenacore. This is a Tenacore um, Malice Soul. This is actually for my staccato that's coming in, but over here, I have a Tenacore holster for my 43X. This holster is phenomenal. This uses D DCC clips. I'm not sure, but they're, they're metal. Um, they hook into your belt. You can see the little tab right there. Um, and they are just, it's incredibly secure. It's incredibly slim, and it makes this gun disappear. Now, that's not to say that this is your only option, okay? The other options you have is over here, I have T-Rex Arms. T-Rex Arms is a phenomenal company, but as you can see, this holster is significantly bigger than this holster, all right? This is meant to hold a comped, essentially a Glock 34, but a Glock 19 with a compensator. And once again, I don't have a barrel on this, but... This is meant to hold a giant pistol with, it actually has a tourniquet attachment. This tourniquet attachment is, of course, for if you have um, a, a puncture in, in some extremity, a leg, and arm, um, it allows you to stop that bleed. So I recommend carrying a tourniquet, which I'll get into, but understand there are different types of holsters. I, for someone, if I were to recommend a holster for someone that is new to guns, I would more so recommend a very slimline holster like this. Okay, just because this is something you may leave at home. Remember, the gun you have on you is more important than the gun you have at home. Throw that off to the side. I have a 1911 Tenacore holster right here. This is another great option. I have, this is what is called a Filster Floodlight. Okay, this is more of a all-purpose holster that can fit many different types of firearms. Um, as long as it has this X300 attachment point. So I could put a P226 in here. I could put an HK. I could put a Glock. I can put almost anything in this holster. Floodlight, uh, it's pretty good. Um, it's not as slimline as the others, which is its big drawback, um, just because it's not purpose-built. But um, once again, it's a great option. And now I want to speak to clips. Um, these right here, these are just soft loop clips. They are extremely comfortable. However, um, while they are extremely stable, actually, too, 
my personal preference is to go with things like DCC clips, but back on T-Rex arms. T-Rex arms is utilizing these plastic clips, and these plastic clips are, I would argue, inferior in every way to the Tentacore clips, but they still get the job done, guys. Find what works for you, but do understand that if you buy a holster like these, you know, you don't need to... Everyone's going to go through 15 different holsters before they find something that works for them, but these really do work quite well. Basically, any holster attachment clip works quite well, even those mono blocks that you see on cheaper holsters. They, they work fine. Okay. The last one is going to be a weird one, and that is going to be this Filster Enigma right here. Okay? I'm going to set this down. This actually goes around your waist. I recommend you go to the Filster website and look up Filster Enigma, and you can see how this entire system works. Um, but really quick, you essentially attach your holster to this. It looks like a little chastity belt. It looks kind of goofy, but it actually allows you to carry in sweatpants or shorts or whatever have you. Okay? And once again, the gun you have on you is better than the gun you leave at home. I don't personally like this system just because it's a little bit too too cumbersome and uh, it's not as rigid as the others, but there are a lot of people that just absolutely love this holster. Okay. We spent enough time on holsters. Let's go over to belts. So, as a newbie, you probably have a million leather belts lying around and you're going to see a lot of recommendations that say buy a gun belt, buy like this really stiff gun belt. And there's good information in there, but... First, I'm going to show you guys a leather belt. This right here is just a leather, I don't know, alligator, I, I don't know what it is, hide leather belt, a leather dress belt that I use when I'm like wearing a suit, right? This belt is more than adequate to carry everything I have on the table, okay? If you have a leather belt, I will recommend you move to a dedicated gun belt, which I'll get into in a moment, but a leather belt, you know, as long as it's even somewhat rigid, it really does work pretty fine. And if you have a tight budget, maybe saving on the belt and just using a belt you already have is is more opportunistic, okay? Now, if you have the funds to move to a gun belt, I would definitely recommend it. Over here, this is my main belt. Um, it's in Flectarn, which I think is really cool. It is made by Core, and it has this ratcheting system where you press down on this tab, and it actually just you guys can hear that um it's incredibly easy to adjust and dear god is it stiff if i wanted to bend this with my hand yeah i i can't even it's making a crease in my hand um look into core look into t-rex arms look into hank's leather look into uh, 511 like there are so many good belts out there just buy one that's really stiff just understand that the belt um you know you can save money by not getting it but it is a nice quality of life upgrade Okay, so if you're a newbie and you're watching this, I hope now you understand what firearms to look at, what holsters to look at, and then what belts to look at. So we're basically done with gun stuff now, all right? If you have more questions, comment down below, go to Reddit, go to forums, go to, go to Facebook. I don't care where you go. Just get the information you need. Um, I'm going to talk really briefly about ammo here, but then we're going to move on. Now, if you are a newbie, um, I would recommend you get some high quality defensive ammo. You will see that in my 43X, I am running hollow points. Hollow points, what they're going to do is they're going to expand when they enter the target and they're going to create a larger cavitation or they're going to impact the flesh a little bit more than full metal jacket would. Okay. My one, my number one recommendation is going to be uh, spear gold dots. Okay. Um, Hornady makes great ammo, SIG even makes great ammo. Um, there are so many different great ammo manufacturers, but if you're asking my recommendation, Gold Dots. Gold Dots are so good, and many law enforcement agencies use them because they are so reliable and they expand so reliably. Okay? Do understand, for all you new shooters out there, that self-defense ammo is going to have a little bit more kick than FMJ, so it's important that you train with this ammo. When you go to the range, you put let's just say 500 or maybe not 500 but 100 down the pipe before you're 100 percent confident in them all right we're all set with guns the last part of the video um we all came to this video so we could learn about guns right the last part of the video is going to be segueing away from that we're just going to be talking about what i carry what i've found myself needing in everyday situations okay this is going to be very flexible depending on your job depending on your frame depending on a myriad of factors 
all right? But this is what I carry in a day. So first of all, my 43X is always on me. It is in a tentacore holster, which I'll put right here. Um, the next thing I always have on me is a knife, one of these knives in particular. Um, over here, I have a bench blade, right? Just a nice little folder. Um, I have a Leatherman. I don't carry this Leatherman with me very frequently because it's very heavy, but if your job requires a Leatherman, this could be very beneficial to carry on you. Or if you're just a, me a mechanical type of person, a lot of people really like carrying Leathermans. Um, you guys are gonna make fun of me for this one, um, but the point is, is that knives are incredibly important with just like, you know, <laughs> opening packages, going throughout your 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 day to day, as well as like clearing malfunctions. There's a lot of times where I've needed to take out a knife to clear a malfunction in, let's say, my AR, or let's say, like my 1911, right? Because a casing gets stuck in the in the barrel. Um, I think carrying a knife, if you're carrying a gun, just makes sense. Um, do understand that knives aren't replacement for firearms. A lot of people have this idea that they can take a fucking katana to some dude that's shooting up a bowling alley or whatever. Um, that's not really a reality. Uh, human beings are really bad at, at self-defense with our fists unless you've trained many, many years in that. Furthermore, um, self-defense with a knife is also incredibly difficult. Um, this is a balisong. I'm into balisong flipping, and I think it's quite fun, and it's very utilitarian. Um, I have another flipper right here. And um, once again, just carry a knife if you think it makes sense. I think this is a lot less less necessary than carrying the firearm, but I think it can be very beneficial. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be medical. Many people out there carry, uh, well, I, I, actually, I'm going to take that back. About 99% of people don't carry medical, um, and we should because we want to make holes, we want to plug holes, and we want to... Um, stop holes, right? Stop holes is body armor, make holes is a gun, plugging holes. This doesn't plug a hole, but this is a tourniquet right here. This is a micro tourniquet. Um, I don't remember the company that makes it, but it is a lot smaller than a normal tourniquet, and it has had a pretty good amount of testing on it, and it's shown to be a very reliable tourniquet. Um, in a gunfight, um, you have to worry about a lot more than just killing the person. You need to worry about not dying yourself or rendering aid to people that are injured. Okay. Um, this tourniquet can actually just slip right into my pocket, um, and I barely know that it's there. I actually put it in with, like, my knife. So my EDC, a lot of the time, looks like this. And then, a lot of the time, I actually carry a spare mag as well. All right? Um, medical is incredibly important. We as a society don't really um, think about it as much as we should, but I really recommend you carry medical on person. All right. Uh, the last things I carry, uh, this is going to be depending on the person, I carry a wallet, um, I wouldn't recommend you carry, uh, it's not that I have anything wrong with them, but I, I like a lot of just traditional wallets, um, I don't like these like modern wallets that have like cutouts and they're made out of metal and whatnot, um, but a wallet that is very secure is very important. I'm not telling you you need to chain this to your pants like we did in the 90s, or well, like you guys did in the 90s, I wasn't even a thing then. Um, but uh, a wallet that's not going to, um, you know, just slip out of your out of your out of your pocket, which I've seen a lot of these modern wallets do. This leather one is always there. Um, keys. This is, and I know I'm just. It, it doesn't seem very important, but keys are are very important. Um, we don't want to arm. Um, we don't want to arm thieves. So our keys. I actually have this little loop right here, and this clips onto a belt loop. Okay. So no one is able to slip and grab my keys from my pocket like a pickpocketer. Not that that's ever happened to me, um, but I, I don't, I don't uh, ever lose my keys. I never slip out of my pocket. So I would recommend you move to this style if you haven't already or if you, you think it's beneficial to you. But just clipping it to your, your waistband, is um, it means I'm never going to lose these and a, a criminal is not going to get a free car. And if I have guns in the car, which I wouldn't recommend you hold guns in your car, but let's say I'm going to the range and back, um, a thief isn't going to arm themselves and five others, okay? So just make sure your keys are secure. Um, lastly, I just want to talk about apparel. For all the beginners here, uh, you may be worried about printing. And there's this really weird um, idea set that I see on Reddit all the time that's like, oh, no one knows you're printing, right? Like, stop worrying about printing when people post, like, oh, my printing too bad. Um, 
Guys, that is a perfectly normal thing to worry about printing. We've all been there and I'm there constantly, okay? Um, printing telegraphs the fact that you have a gun on you. There is a reality that um, people don't pay attention, which, which kind of is our reality, but you don't want to print in case someone like me is paying attention. I know when people carry guns all the time because I, I know all the telltale signs. Um, so I'm just going to give a couple really quick recommendations. As a guy, if you wear t-shirts, get away from t-shirts. First of all, they look like shit. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Um, but flannels and whatnot just look infinitely better. They look a little bit dressy. They're like one step up from like a t-shirt. They look a little bit dressier and they conceal incredibly well. Um, it's also skinny jeans and whatnot can be a little bit more difficult to conceal carry in because it can kind of bulge out. Um, but at the same time, um, pants with a flex to them. A, a flexible waist pant is really nice for concealed carrying because you'll slip the gun in and the pant will kind of mold around the gun, not in a printing way, but just in like a comfort way. So you don't need to buy your pants two sizes too big for them to fit your gun. Instead, the holster will just be accepted into those pants. So like I said, if you're a guy and you've never gotten into concealed carrying before, and that's why you're watching this video, if you want my utmost recommendation on concealed carrying, get a nice flannel or get nice flannels, buy some pants that have a little bit of a flexible inseam. All of my pants have that little bit of a flex inseam at this point, and you can make fun of me for wearing yoga pants essentially. I don't give a shit. It's comfortable and it works really well. Okay. Um, I carry a watch with me everywhere I go. I have a lot of different watches. Um, and this next topic, and this is the final topic for the video, and that is just to avoid looking as, as tactical as you can, right? Um, this is very tactical, but it's hidden. Uh, this doesn't look really tactical, does it? This just makes me look like I'm a person that enjoys flipping, flipping battle songs like a loser, which is reality. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's really important that you don't wear nothing but but 511 and you wear these tactical boots and you wear these tactical looking pants because you're going to out yourself as someone that's carrying a gun. Now, I'm also of the opinion that as an American citizen, I can wear whatever the fuck I want. But if you are concerned about this, which I mean, it's it's fine, like you really it's it's fine to be concerned about it. Um, you want to stay away from things that look overtly tactical. So I'm going to take this off my head right now. This is what I was just wearing. Haley strategic multi cam hat. This kind of outs me immediately as being a tactical person. Um, furthermore, uh, I'm not going to show my face here because my camera is not set up that way. But in case you guys don't know what I look like, I have a trimmed beard. Um, and I'm bald and uh, I wear hats, right? And, and I wear flannels and I wear, I really like the color green. So I try not to wear a lot of multicam and whatnot, but even then you could look at me and say, oh, that guy's a gun guy. Just because I, I, I have that demeanor to me, right? I go to the gym, my arms are big, my chest is big. People are going to look at me and say, not to, not to toot my own horn, people are going to look at me though and say, oh, that guy that guy's definitely a gun guy because, you know, I can just like tell he looks like that kind of person. And that's just true, right? That's kind of an unavoidable thing for me. Um, when I really want to dress down, I can kind of avoid that. But a lot of the time I like to wear these hats. So one good way around that is um, this multicam hat right here. This multicam hat just from a distance looks jet black. No one knows this is even multicam black. And furthermore, I have plenty of other hats that are um, like paper boy hats and just blank hats and uh, like location hats, so like like colleges and whatnot, that don't out me as a gun guy. I'm not wearing, and I own G-Shocks, but I'm not wearing a super multi-cam G-Shock that also outs me. I'm not wearing Solomon shoes that out me. Um, I'm wearing, I'm actually wearing Yeezys, so people think I'm a little loser in that regard too. So. Just make sure you're not outing yourself as a gun person because it, it could give away the fact that you're concealed carrying a firearm and the point of a firearm being concealed is that it is concealed, right? The point of the, the word CCW is that it is concealed, all right? The second people know you're a target, um, and well, I guess that that's in the word. You become the target, okay? All right, so like I said, um, I hope if you are a new prospective gun buyer, or I hope if you're a brand new gun person, you learned something from this video. Um, I think I covered everything just to get you started in your gun journey. 
you're going to learn so many life lessons. You're going to find holsters that work. This may not work for you. You're going to find knives that work. This may be a little bit too big for you, but this is perfectly fine, right? It's tiny. Um, you're going to find guns that work for you. This one is tiny, this one's a little bit bigger, and then we go up and up and up. But what's important is you find what works for you and you take the tips I gave you here and you start carrying, okay? If your state permits it and your law permits it and you have the correct credentials, right? CCW in some cases, in some states, I don't have to, but some states they require you to take courses. If you have all this, I recommend you carry because the police are not able to stop an active shooter the, like the nanosecond it starts happening. It's gonna take them minutes or even hours to get that person, okay? It is your job to protect your life and your liberty, right? Um, I can live with, well, not literally, but I can live with myself dying, right? I can't live with my loved ones dying. I can't live with my family members dying which is why we carry firearms to protect the people we love okay i can't live with that mistake please carry a firearm if you have the ability all right if you have any questions post down below and i'd love 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 to answer them because i'm so passionate about this topic um as always it's been a pleasure talking with you guys today like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and i'll see you guys in the next one